So today we're going to install the brand new 60 inch ghost electric motor on my StarCraft STX 2050. So I got it laying right down here on the floor and we're going to pull it out of the box for the first time and we're going to show exactly how to get this motor installed on the STX 2050. And this box right here is going to have the scissor bracket, the actual main scissor housing bracket of the ghost electric motor. So like I said, this is a, one of the two main pieces of the electric motor. So we'll take this out, set it down, pull this box out of here, out she goes. Then this is going to be your prop for your electric motor. As we pull this foam back, it's going to all start to make sense a little bit more here. Here's your key fob for the 60 inch shaft comes with the key fob. Um, everything that you're going to need there in that box. And then as we open this box, you're going to see it's got the things like the power piston and a couple of the small connections and bolts and stuff. So as we open her up here, lots of packaging. Um, these are little connectors and we'll get into that what that's for, but that's for holding the wire, your bolts for bolting on the electric motor. This strap right here is going to strap it when you're going down the highway. Like I said, this right here is your power piston and that's going to come right with the packaging. Um, the bar for where it actually sits on the floor and you're going to cut that to length. We'll get into that. This is like a 0.1 antenna right here. You can see that it basically has everything you need uh, for an extra GPS module on the ghost electric motor. An extra cord. Um, this is a, a splitter cord that then allows you to plug into your sonar unit. Prop nut, T connection for the NEMA network system. A very pretty Lowrance sticker. And again, a couple of small parts that we'll get into. So this right here is everything out of the package and we'll get into showing exactly how I install this ghost electric motor on the boat. Okay, so basically all that I've done so far is I've taken the two pieces and I set this piece on top of the scissor bracket, making them one piece. And the reason I do that is for two reasons. One, I have to figure out my distance from the shaft of the boat or from the shaft going to the boat. Um, if it's too close to the boat and there's a little bit of flex in the shaft, it'll come back and hit the boat and we don't want that. So we want to make sure it's mounted plenty far out from the bow of the boat itself. The other really important thing is the power head needs to be inside the gun of the boat when we fold it up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this whole system up loosely, position it how I want it, and then I can mark the holes to drill. Before I then drill the holes, I'll pull everything back down, I'll undo these two bolts again, pull this back off, bolt the scissor bracket on, and then this comes back on again. But it's a little bit extra step, but I'm telling you you want to do it just to make sure that everything is aligned exactly how you want it. Because remember, once you through bolt it, it's there forever. And one of the things that you want to keep in mind is you want to make sure that this power head is right inside the railing like this. Because if it's not, and it's just out like that, now you're going to hit it. Sure enough, you're going to hit it when you, when you go to bring the boat into dock. So very important to have this motor inside the gunnel. And then you got to remember there's going to be a drop down bar right here that goes to your floor. So you want to make sure there's enough room that the bar isn't hitting on anything. And of course, it's going to clear the gunnel as well. Okay, once you have the electric motor placed, and remember, this is definitely a two-person job. You want to bring your buddy involved. Get a buddy, you know, in this case, I have my dad here helping me hold on to this um, because there's a lot going on. It's a very heavy electric motor. But once you have it in line where the power head is inside the gunnel, your bar is clearly going to sit on the floor with no problems, then I'm just going to mark everything. So I'm going to take a Sharpie. I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to actually bolt it in six places. So just drop the Sharpie down in the hole, mark right on the carpet itself. So there's two spots. Make sure I have enough room to go up here. So now what I've done is just created six dots on the carpet so I know exactly where I need to go back to drill this bracket into place. Okay, so basically the next step is that we have to, we drilled the holes, now we have to through bolt the scissor bracket on. But before you do that, you wanna make sure you add this strap. So all you're gonna do with this, very simple, you're gonna run it up underneath the scissor bracket, let that sit loose on the scissor bracket right now. Then you're gonna grab your bolts, you're gonna find yourself a hole, and you're gonna try to figure out where your holes are. Right there. And then line up all six bolts into the hole. 
Once you have all six bolts in place, basically you're just going to through bolt them at that point. From there, we're on to the next step. Once everything is attached on the scissor bracket itself, bolt this shaft back on and we're really close to being done. Okay, now that you have the scissor bracket mounted on and the head mounted back on again, the next step is to mount this power piston that I have right here. And if you look at it, pretty simple, it just says this end up, and that means that this end connects right here. So take the hardware, then all we're basically gonna do is we're gonna get it started. And so we take this little nut and bolt, and it slides in there. And then I'm just gonna get this one started on it no need to tighten it up right now. And then the key is, and the reason why I have my dad holding the bracket in the position that it is, is you have to get, you have to get this all mounted when it's not under tension. So, he's actually gonna start to let it down a little bit. And I'm gonna let him keep letting it down, keep letting it down, oh, about right there. Actually bring it up just a little bit, about right there. And we're gonna get try to get this slid in the hole. Let's see. There we go. Once we get that pin in there, like that, I'm actually just gonna hold the pin, and as we start to open it up, it's gonna put tension on that pin right there, and it can sit right here. Now at that point, no one even needs to hold on to it. That piston is holding on to it itself, and we can tighten it up. So. The piston is on, you tighten up these screws up here, you tighten up these screws down here, and now you have the power assist of the scissor bracket. The next step is to put on these little cable management clips. There's only two of them, but they're really nice. They take and kind of control this cable up here, uh, and they mount right here on the side with just an Allen key, and then they basically just clip in just like that and hold your cable up along the scissor bracket of the electric motor. Once you have the cable management clips installed, the next step that I like to do is mount the bar that's gonna go down on the floor. Now what this is for is basically keeps the weight of the scissor so when you're bouncing, it's gonna sit down on the floor of the boat. Now every single boat is different between the gunnel and the floor, so you're gonna to have to custom cut this. What I like to do is I kind of set it up there and get an idea of where we're gonna be at. Now it's obviously sitting on the floor down here, and the threads are gonna thread all the way up on this piece right here. So it's looking like I'm gonna need to cut about that much off, whatever that is. So the distance from here to here, I'll measure, and that's what I have to cut off on the bottom of this post. So when you bring the electric motor back up and it clips down, it's sitting nice and firm on the floor of the boat. Once you get it cut and you know it's exactly the right length, there's a little rubber cap right there. In fact, I got an extra one in my pocket. Uh, for another motor that I have there, but this little cap, uh, I glue it right on the end of it, and so it's a, it's a nice soft spot on the carpet, so you don't have to worry about it cutting the carpet. But then all you're basically gonna do is you're gonna lift the motor up, just enough to get that pole underneath there, and you're gonna tighten it down all the way. Once it's tightened all the way up, your distance should be just about perfect. Get some of these screws and rigging stuff out of the way. And when you set it down, you hear it click. We'll pull it up one more time so you can hear that. You'll hear an actual click. And that's where it's sitting right there on the floor of the boat. So now that can't go anywhere. Now the next thing that you do is there's a little screw nut that you tighten all the way up on there. And then a pretty little dress cap that you put over the top. And then that's pretty much done. At this point, the Ghost electric motor is pretty much mounted. I have a couple more things that I need to hook up on this new boat before I'm ready to hook up the foot control, but we'll walk through exactly what it takes to do that. Now, the first thing you're gonna do is this is like a .1 antenna. Uh, basically, it's an extra GPS module for the Ghost electric motor. And I like to mount that on a flat surface up on the bow of the boat, and you'll see that there's an arrow. That arrow is very important. You want that arrow pointing forward. Uh, and so what I'll do is I'll drill a little hole in the boat and I'll mount that antenna uh, right here on the bow of the boat. And then what happens is we'll pull this foot control up because there's a lot going on on the foot control of the electric motor. You have obviously your main power, 
Now what we're going to do here is we're going to wire a plug, um, just a little clip plug onto this wiring and then that'll clip into the power of the boat so I have 36 volts coming into the foot control of the electric motor. Right next to that you'll see this connection and this is a NEMA connection that basically connects the, uh, the point one antenna or the puck here, uh, you connect it directly in line. So this wire will get routed down and then connect into the foot control right here. On the other side, there's two more black cables coming off. And I'll explain what these are for. This cable right here is for your, your sonar. Now there's a splitter or a, or a little dongle style connection that came in the package when you got your ghost motor that'll plug in here and then plug right into the back of your unit. So now the sonar that's on the ghost itself will be reading directly into your electronics that you have rigged up on the bow of the boat. And lastly, you have this connection right here, which is a NEMA 2000 connection that basically goes into the backbone of your NEMA network Okay, this is a boat sitting right next to the other boat that I've already finished up and I'm going to show you how I have the foot control hooked up. Now we already have power and you can see I have a clip power here run right in. The nice thing about that is it's easy to unplug and then plug back in. It just clips in like that. To power up the electric motor there's a little power button and you turn that on and you have power to the electric motor. Now right now it's 24 volts and it's 36 volts. It's going to come factory 24 volt. The way that you make it into a 36 volt system is you have your two quick key buttons up here on the top of the pedal. What you're going to do is you're going to hold those down and as you hold those down you'll hear a beep and it's going to start flashing. Now you go over to your test and you'll see it's blinking 24 and it's blinking 36. When it's switched over to 36 at that point when I hold these two buttons down it's going to stay 36 volts and it's going to be now taking 36 volts. The beauty of that with the ghost motor is if you're on the water and you have a 36 volt system and you have a battery go down you can quickly switch it back to 24 volts and still be able to fish the rest of the day so that's a really nice feature. And that's pretty much it from start to finish how to stall a ghost electric motor.